In this video, we're going to go through some of the customization options that are available for you when you're using the Slicer Visual in Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together with some demos so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fennan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So this video today will cover one of the basic visuals that you can use in Power BI, the slicer visual. And if you've used or played around with Power BI before, it's probably one of the visuals that you learn how to use first. So I got a question from one of my colleagues asking me if a certain feature or an option could be done in the slicer visual. And as I was explaining to her what could be done, I sort of realized there's actually quite a lot of things that you can do with the slicer visual itself. And it's sometimes not always so obvious how and if you could do it in the first place. So today I'm gonna go through some of the things that you could do in the slicer visual if you didn't know them yet. So first, if you didn't know, a slicer visual simply allows you to select and filter data points in your report. So here's an example report that I prepared today. It's using a couple of tables from the Northwind database, which is a database for a fictional company that is selling goods internationally. And in this report example, I added three different visuals. We have the card visual, just totaling up the sales for the company. You have the total sales by category. And then you have total sales by time. So you have uh, uh, sales, total sales by month here on this line chart at the bottom. If, let's say, you wanted to give your users the ability to filter the data in your reports, simply use the slicer visual here. So let's add one. And let's just select category for now, just to show you how it, the, uh, the slicer visual looks like. So this is what the slicer visual looks like. So as you can see, it gives you or your users the ability to filter the data in your report. So you can select one category, for example, and just filter all the visuals in this report. You can select multiple categories from your slicer by holding control and then clicking, which is sometimes not very obvious that you can do, and it's not very natural. So what you can do is if you wanted to give the ability to, for your users to select multiple items in your slicer visual, you simply just go to the selection just turn off the multi select with control and add a select all. So that gives you, uh, instead of uh, the highlight, it gives you a tick, just showing that you can choose multiple items in here. And you can even select everything if you wanted to. When you're running out of space in your report, you don't want your slicer visual to be taking up a lot of space in your page itself. So you can actually change it into a drop down. And you'll find that option under the slicer header here. So you'll notice um, you have obviously this eraser that just deselects all the selections you've made. And it's not on the ellipsis icon at the top here, which sounds intuitive, but it's actually another uh, set of buttons here. It's this button and it allows you to switch between lists or a drop down. So you'll see that now we require much less space. We can just simply plop it up there. And if you select the items here, it will just expand for you to sort of make your selection without taking up too much space in your report. You can also change the way your slicer visuals are being shown. So instead of showing your data vertically like this, you can show it horizontally. And if you just try to browse now in your formatting options here, you won't find that option. And that's because you are in the drop down version of this list of this slicer. So if you change it back to list, pay attention to the options here. It gives you this new option orientation. So when you select horizontal here instead, so you'll see the difference now. So you can see that you now have a list of your categories in a slicer that you can still select, but it's not uh, vertically anymore, it's horizontally. You can still preserve this view and show your data vertically like this. So that's also another option. And what I tend to find is if you don't have a lot of categories or field options in your slicer, it's a lot easier for your users to kind of see what they are actually selecting and what is selected as opposed to getting it from a 
list or drop down menu. So with slicers, you're also not limited to showing one field of data. You can also show hierarchy of fields if you want to. So for example, let's, let's delete this. And let's say we want to visualize the sales that we're making. So we want to get the customer's information and we want to know which country they belong to and we want to be able to filter to those countries. So let's drag in the country field in our report here. Let's change it into a slicer visual. So you see, it just gives us a list of all the countries. Let's change this into a drop down and let's add it on top of all our other visuals here. You'll see if they wanted to check and see the sales for the US, it just filters to that country. So from the slicer visual itself, you have one field here, the country, but you can add more in there. So let's say we wanted to add a city or maybe a region underneath it. So you'll see that now when you select or find an option in your slicer visual, you'll see that you'll have the ability to expand or collapse categories that allows you to kind of go even deeper into um, your data. If you have a lot of data in your slicer visual, you can enable this search option, which you will find in the formatting options here under slicer settings. If you enable this, it will present to you a search bar when you use the drop down menu here, which allows you to simply just search for items in your uh, drop down slicer visual. So you'll see here as I type UK, it will find the specific item in my slicer. But what's really cool about this slicer visual is that it search for every single level in your slicer. So it means if I look for a certain country or a certain city, for example, you will see that although it's not on the country, it did find it in one of these other two fields that we have. So if I just expand here, it's no region, but it is in the city Paris. So you can simply select that and it will give you the ability to filter to that city. And finally, a good option for slicers is to preserve them as you move across different pages. And you can do this by simply using the sync slicers. So the sync slicers pane you will find under the view ribbon. If you select here, it will open up the pane here. And as you select a filter in your report, it will give you the state of it in your report. So which page it is visible at and if it's synced to any other pages. And just to demonstrate how that works, so you see that this page, I think we're in page two, we've added this new filter, the ability to search by country and different hierarchies, but it's not available in page one yet. But what we want is for our users to have the ability to flick through in each of these pages and have their selections preserved so they don't have to do it again. So you can do it by simply selecting the slicer that you've created and selecting add and sync with all pages. What it will do is if you look at the page one now, it will add that filter on that page. And if you make any selection here, like for example, like let's just select France, for example, that gets preserved in page one and page two. And Power BI is really good at suggesting if you want to sync your slicers, you probably got this before. So if we go back to our page one here and I've deleted the slicer on page two, for example, I'm just gonna copy this slicer. And if I try to paste it on a new page, it will give me this option or uh, this, this option saying that if I want to sync this visual and if I just say yes, it it achieves the same thing. And that's really it for this video. I hope this video wasn't too basic for a lot of you out there. I just thought it was quite interesting that this one visual has a lot of options for you to kind of play around with that gives you a lot of ways to filter your data and present them to your users. So I hope you got some value out of that. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.